Hello and welcome to the Dublin Arsenal preview show. I'm your host, Jonathan Giles. On this week's special show, I'm joined by Eamon and Ozzy to do a summer transfer window roundup and also look at our Champions League opponents. And also, if you're out and about around Finsbury Park area, check out the Faldring Fullback Pub. Definitely a good spot to head to. Myself and Eamon, highly recommend it. And Ozzy, when he gets in, when it's not busy. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy the show. And, and the show this week in our third um, show now, and it's uh, thanks for all the comments from our last two shows. Much appreciated to anyone that's watching. And thanks to Pete Baker uh, for coming on. Myself and Ozzy were chatting to him. Really nice guy. And I hope to have him on again and hopefully the start of away fans to come on to our preview show. So um, thanks very much for anyone that's um, listening to us on Spotify and the Dublin Earth YouTube channel. Uh, Eamon and Ozzy, how are you? Oh, good, mate. Oh, good. As I say, at the end of the day, Get on. <laughs> Thanks for your contribution, as right, always, David. Did, did you, like, you recognise this shirt, Jonathan? 1971. No, 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 no. This is the shirt I wore <laughs> uh, when standing in front of you, playing on the Emirates pitch, when you were going down like a roller lino behind me in goal. Um, yeah, this is the Dublin Arsenal Supporters Look Club. International, yeah. five-a-side, get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got up mercantile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to say so the least, we were well forgotten about after that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I had I my best, my best days were in that short that day. Um along with the sink and hangover by everyone else in the morning. But uh <laughs> That's been quickly forgotten. Thank God in the annals of history of the Emirates Stadium. <laughs> um, thanks for coming on, lads. A pleasure as always. Um, we kick into the uh, busy transfer deadline day. It ended up being uh, right at the back end of it for us uh, on Friday evening in particular. Um, the most uh, notable sign really from that evening for ourselves was completely unexpected. Raheem Sterling from Chelsea on a loan deal. Um, but I think Arteta could get the best out of him and Sterling seems to want to prove himself as well, you know, so, you know, hopefully a good impact signing for the season ahead. Um, Neto came on loan from Bournemouth, a fairly decent goalkeeper. Uh, I have to say, I was quite surprised that Bournemouth let him go, Um, but they've signed uh, Kepa from Chelsea themselves, but I think he'd be a very good um, backup to David Rea. Uh, Mikel Moreno uh, came from Sociedad um, earlier last week, uh, 27.4 million. Slight fracture to his shoulder from Gabriel, sadly falling on him in um, a training session last week, but hopefully um, he should be ready to go, hopefully for maybe the City Leicester game, who knows. Uh, but uh, a quality signing nonetheless. Um, I know I was listening to the paper talk there on Sky Sports News, they have a half ten and the journalist there that does it from Newcastle and says the Newcastle fans really wanted him to stay when he was there for that season so that all bodes well you know um, I think from the Euros he had as well there's a lot of promise to come from him um, of course Ricardo Fiori came on in July uh, 42 million and we saw our, ourselves as he from being at the game Saturday he looks really decent you know big tower and defender and he wears his heart in his sleeve by the looks of so another good sign and then uh, the best bit of business was seeing in David Rea for the £27 million pound from Brantford. We could see Ramsdale didn't get a sniff from September last season after the Everton game and he hasn't looked back, Ray, and um, say I, I, I'm beginning to call him safe hands too. You know, definitely in the mould of Seaman and Lehman, but, you know, in his own right, a top goalkeeper. So um, I'm really happy with the transfer window business. Uh, the notable ones uh, that went out... Um, Obviously, Eddie and Ketty say goodbye. Uh, Crystal Palace, 25 million quid. Quite decent money we got for him. Sadly, it just didn't work out for him at the Arsenal. Um, and me and Smith Rowe went to Fulham for 27 million pounds. Another Hayland Academy lad, uh, sadly gone. Aaron Ramsdale, Southampton, 18 million quid. I uh, can see the three there at the weekend, which was sad. <laughs> His first game in quite a while, but... Nothing but admiration for him. He was my man of the match for so many games a couple of seasons back. Um, he was kind of unexpected to go to us, but a real top pro. And 
sadly it was edged out by a better keeper and David Ray, but he's sadly I would have loved him to stay, but there's not enough room for two number one. So that that's that was the end of Ireland, sadly, but best of luck to in his career at Southampton. Reese Nelson went on loan to Fulham. So there's a few ex Arsenal heads there. Um a Wobby, Smith Rowan, Nelson, I think that could be a good move for him. And uh Brandon probably over here. Leno, yeah. The goalkeeper, Leno, yeah. Yeah. And Leno as well, sorry, yeah, it's becoming a little arsenal there, as you could say. Um hopefully it doesn't come back to haunt us. But um no, all the best to Reese Nelson. Always be remembered for that Bournemouth screamer, you know. Um and always uh, he he gave us he, he always gave his best when he came on, you know, and sadly those better players ahead of him, certainly in the pecking order. But another one that left us was uh Fabio Vieira, um a long move back to Porto. Good to him the world of good being back home, you know. And there's a clause in his contract there for there's no move if they don't play him for an X amount of games. There, you know, there's going to be some sort of um I don't think Arsenal's gonna have some sort of fine with him. But I think part of they lost a few over the summer and they really like him there. You know, he's a real fan's favourite, so I think that can only be a good move for them, Fabio. Um and then of course, just briefly, um earlier on the summer, Tavares went to Lazio on loan. Laconga we watched him in the last couple of games for Sevilla. Seems to be doing fairly decent there, you know. Could be that, you know, could be his standard there. Ruel Walters went, uh, Emerio Cozier Dubri, and of course, um, Cedric Suarez and Mohamed and Lenny got gone completely. So, <laughs> bit power players. But, um, I come to yourself, Eamon. Were you happy enough with transfer deadline day for the Arsenal? Yeah, yeah. No, no, not transfer deadline day. Transfer deadline day. It's a bit up there with pig mall and the referees flying circus. It's a lot of, yeah, it's, 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 it's just Hollywood. It's television. Um, you know, I, I think we got done what we probably wanted to do. Uh, we all knew that Calafiori and Marino were the two targets, right? So let's start with Calafiori. Um, he's a terrific looking athlete. And this fellow will defend, he'd kick his own grandmother in the Italian style, Chiellini, but he can play as well. Um, one thing, the one thing I noticed about um, you, you wouldn't have seen it um, when you were at the game uh, against Brighton. He also joined in the chorus at the start of the game of North London Forever. That tells you all you need to know about him, right? Secondly, Mikel Mourinho is absolutely necessary in the squad for something I touched on on the last show, is that he has that left foot um, I'm going to say left eight, uh, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> left, uh, I think. Left midfield. I, I think he could make a monster out of Martinelli um, with that kind of angle of passing that Declan wouldn't have, and the free Declan up to the other things. Um, and he's, he, he, you know, he, he's good physically. Um, it's unfortunate that he get injured, but we shouldn't be kind of, you know bringing the Samaritans about that. It's a few weeks. And I thought Arteta was very good when he said, well, in that few weeks, he'll be at every meeting. He'll be learning how we do things around here. This is the Arsenal way. This is the way we do things around here. We're not just going to waste the time and have him sitting there at home with a fractured shoulder. He's going to learn the Arsenal way. Do you know? Um, who else came in? Well, Raya it was a must. And that's how I'm very pleased about yeah, um, exactly to have that kind of experience at backup level um, is good. And myself and Carl had a private conversation um, <laughs> when the window closed uh, about Raheem Sterling. Um, and ordinarily, I would have, I wouldn't have gone near him, but that was we needed somebody wide, right? And if you look at the deal we got, Chelsea are paying more of his wages than we are. It was a no-brainer. Now. The big thing is, Raheem, does he come into the dressing room thinking he's Charlie Big Balls? Not in that That's, dressing room, he won't. Yeah, the personality. Not, in that, not in that dressing room, he won't. And if you look at the promo videos that he's done, um, to me, he would probably see this as a chance to save face and get knuckled down and do well. You know, he won't be he won't be a big fish in that dressing room. He'd be well. You welcome on board, pal. So long as you buy into this, and if you don't, head off back to Chelsea. We only have you for it. They're paying half your wages. 
You know, so I think it was a good deal. And, and that boy can play, by the way. He's pace. You know, he can play. So um, I know I was I was pleased with it on the outgoings. I'm delighted Reese took a move. That he's not going to be just sitting there week in, week out. Um, and Ketia, when you say it didn't work out for him at the Arsenal, but he played 178 games and got 40 odd goals. You know, it's not it's not shabby. Respectable, yeah. yeah. Why, brief, briefly, Eamon, why do you think it just didn't click for Eddie? You know, I just think he's a notch below what we need. I think, I, I think if he if he's a star torn centre forward at a club with slightly lower expectations than us, he can be a main man and he'll get goals. He'll get goals all day, that fella. You know, um, he's very good positional sense in the box and he's a good finisher. We played a different type of game. We, we didn't really play a centre forwards game. You can see yeah. that with Kyle Norris now. You know, um, yeah, we look for something different from from our forwards. Uh, I'm delighted Ramsdale got a move, but I think he's going to be busy. Um, Vieira going back to Portugal. That's the end of it. Do you think so? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Do you not that's think? Do you not think no, that might? No, no. In, in what way? Um, because the Portuguese league is is is, is different gravy. It's it's um you know it's Spain light and it's a different type of game. Uh, he's a really really good player with a really really good attitude. Although I hear one of the problems was they didn't try and hard enough. Um, maybe just England wasn't for him, uh, and that can happen. Um, I wish him well. Um, but he won't be back for sure. And uh, Smith Rowe. Uh, love him. I love watching him. He's like a he's like a nice skater. But I've, I've watched him uh, two full games now for Fulham, and that boy is not fit. He's very very good, but he's blown like a sail after an hour. He's not fit, you know. Yeah. And briefly, I mean, Aaron Ramsdale, good move from for Southampton. Oh, it's a, it's a good move for him, but he's going to be very busy. That's for sure. I think Aaron's a great, Aaron's a great lad, and I think, get back in. I think I think what the club had to say about Aaron and what Aaron had to say about the club kind of summed up his journey there. He was like a breath of fresh air at our club. He was. He, he was the exact person to have, as you said, Jordan down rebuilding time, well, wasn't he? He was really unlucky because we tried to get Raya before we get Ramsdale. We couldn't get him. We got Ramsdale, and then Ray became available. You know, yeah. he's you just know a pro, yeah. a top pro. Um, to yourself, Ozzy, it, it was a busy enough deadline day. You know, really at the back end of it, were you quite happy with our summer spending on Ray, Calipari, Marino, Neto, and Sterling? Well, firstly, I've got to say, I love a transfer window where you sign three keepers. We've got Tommy Setford in as well, didn't we? Yeah, we have. <laughs> so it's a nice window when you sign three goalkeepers, right? Um, so, so let's just get that one in. I think we signed two to one before. Um, but yeah, but he's, um, so yeah, so look, we've strengthened... Um, we strengthen that and let's let's cover the goalkeepers first. I think David Raya, yeah. we, we know like 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 Eamon said, I think he was always the first choice. Uh, and we can see why now. We can see why and, and, and that's planning out. I think Neto, great. It's just what we needed for a backup keeper. Um so so there's a couple of experience there and then and then obviously we've got a, a future, maybe a future start, or is that just someone that's just gonna get hold of and probably sell on in a few years, yeah. you know, a bit of a money making thing. But nonetheless it's um it's good business there. I think we we've, we've decided I think with any transfer window, um this transfer window mm-hmm. I just wanted to make better than what we had, right? It weren't a case of bolstering numbers. We had a bloated squad, I think, um, with a lot of players that are on that fringe. Are they good enough for Arsenal? We're questioning that. I think every player we brought in, like a serious player we brought in, was has, has improved our squad because we're at that, we're at a fine tuning stage now. Whatever phase that Arteta's at, he's fine tuning it. And and I think with like Calafuri, I think we're just looking at this this player. He's 22. He doesn't look it for stars. No, he doesn't. He, play, he plays a lot older than that. Like when you look at him, he's, he looks a lot older than 22. He's he's absolutely massive, isn't he? Like I think when when you, when you, like I didn't realize how big the guy was. Um and it, yeah, he's it, gonna it's gonna he's already started to stir things up a bit. Um and I think he'll be. 
very difficult to keep out of that team. I think Timbers has got a big job on his hands to try and keep yeah, him out of team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think and I think you might see. And I'm thinking without going into sort of next games, depending on how injuries are. I think you might see him start the next game at left back, and then um, Timber might might have to push him midfield. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. but 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 he gives us he gives us options, and I think. Um, that that's very good. It also long term succession plan if we do lose a Gabriel or a, or someone like that. You know, if we do lose someone out injured, for you know, we've got a very good person to stop step in there. So I think that's a great great signing, and it, it makes our our team stronger um, by having him around. And then we sort of go on to Mikel Moreno. Um, again, solid player, a bit different to what Artes has normally been buying, but I think um, he he he's solid. He's he, like like Gaiman said. It, I think I talk about a lot. Of, there's a lot of talk about his jewels, and I think last season in Europe he had the most amount of jewels won awards. You know, did all these stats and stuff. But I think only uh, the only person second to him was Bruno Gamirez at Newcastle. So he's got that sort of bite him about play. But I think what part of the game you don't see too too much. But I think at Sociedad he was really good at putting the ball through. If you can see Martinelli. Um, you can see Martinelli getting on the end of that from that left hand side. I think that that could be very beneficial. I think with um Marino as well, like I, I did see a few sort of uh stories about this, but but you've got Marino who's, who's used to play in Vodegaard, so there's already that understanding that he used to play with them, um, with Vodegaard and also um Isaac, uh, Isaac at Newcastle. I know, I know he was linked to Arsenal, and they say, Is he going to be the final cherry on the cake next season when we get um to, to, to reunite that three? Because M3 were very good at Sociedad apparently, and they, and they linked up very well. So you never know, keep one eye on that for the next transfer show. But but I think Marino, you know, he has got previous. Um, sort of relationship with Odegaard as well, and they were very successful there. So, a uh, solid player. Um, yeah, happy with that as well. And then Raheem Sterling, and Eamon was absolutely right. I texted because I was watching the world of Arsenal melt down <laughs> in front of my eyes, and I just needed a, a soft voice to explain and calm me down to what was Look going on around me. Don't make he said he puts out the fire, all right? <laughs> honestly, honestly, honestly. Well, you know, I just I was just intrigued by this. I thought I was interested to find out what people thought of it because. Because, because I think on the grand scheme of things, and someone, someone summarised it to me and went, "Is he better than Reese Nelson? Would you have Raheem Sterling over Reese Nelson?" And the answer is yes. He, he make is a better alternative than Reese Nelson. Um, as much as I like Reese, and don't get me wrong, I do like him. He's a good lad, great player, but he's not Raheem Sterling. And this guy's only 29 as well, and he's got a lot to prove, right? So he's got a fire in his belly. No one knows him better than Mikel Arteta. Um, he he wants to get back in the England squad. He said that. So so, it, we've got a player there that's fighting for everything, and and, and ultimately he's been mismanaged at Chelsea. And I think he's along with the long... he, he, could he turn out thirty? Could he turn out like Kai Havertz, a man resurrected? Well, you know, exactly that. When you look at who signed him. Thomas Tuchel signed him. So 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 you know he he's a good manager, a well respected manager. Yeah. Yeah. Um and, and I think he added when when he was signing players for Chelsea, it it weren't you know, it weren't outside interference like there is now. And I think he, he will join a long list of players over the years that have regretted going to Chelsea. And I think this is like his last sort of opportunity and I and I, and I hope that, you know, he can come on and and, and I think he does offer he offers something different. He, you know, he can play right, he can play left. And sorry, sorry, Eamon. No, I want I want to relay to the uh, the listeners what I actually told <laughs> you, because I think that I'm just looking <laughs> back at it. Um, and, you know, Make sure you get the right message here, Eamon. <laughs> this, 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 this is at twenty uh, twenty past nine on Friday night, right? So um, it's an obvious one. If Bukayo gets injured, we're goosed. So an established player makes sense. He won't be Charlie Big Balls in that dressing room. It'll be Hey Raheem. Welcome to the family. Now you need to work. He could stay on 300 grand at Chelsea. I think he preferred to work. Can you imagine Ben or Declan or Thomas or Raya if his attitude isn't right? I think he probably knows that. He was brilliant for City. Chelsea was a playground. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's... And that's, and that's... That sums it up nicely, and that's, and that's exactly why I text Eamon on the transfer deadline day when I'm losing the will to live reading all these WhatsApp <laughs> groups. Um, for my own mental health, best thing, best thing to do is just turn off the notifications on transfer deadline day. I think that's what I'm going to do going forward. But um, but yeah, look, I think I think we'll see a a a, a, 
a revived Raheem Sterling. Um, you know, we've got to be patient with him, not quick to jump on him. Um, but I think he's got the right manager, and I think we can do something with him. So I, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to seeing him in an Arsenal shirt. And um, you know, let's let's see how it goes this season. And I think Chelsea paid eight million to for him to play for us. So um, um, that, that 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 always makes me smile when Chelsea having to pay eight million for a player to come and play for the Arsenal. It, so, it was um, a Dick Torpen signing. We rubbed them yeah, blind. It, it was. It was. No. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. I, yeah, I think. I think. Arteta's worked with him when he was with him at Man City and Arteta believes that there's a player in there, you know, just crying to get out again, you know, and like as you says, it's mad. It seems like he's been around for years and he's still, he's only 29, you know. He's... Remember, remember at 31 years of age, um, we, we have previous with Chelsea on this one. Um, we signed Ben Ayoun, right? Yeah, what a player he was. Yeah. Absolutely. And Chelsea, Chelsea paid his wages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got him. We got him for the season. He fell in love with the club, and he gave us a brilliant season. In fact, he qualified us for the Champions League that year. Yeah, uh, away at West Brom the last day of the season. You know, yeah. I was at a game very briefly. I think it was actually. I think that tournament could have been on that May. Norwich yeah. game. We won three nil, yeah, three two against Norwich, and he scored a beauty into the top corner in the left hand well, corner. We didn't actually, it was a three all draw, but there you go. Was, you know? No, oh yeah, your man Morrison. Was on the <laughs> <laughs> you have to ruin good stories. Eh? I'm sick. <laughs> you got, yeah, actually, I scored something in like that in the Emirates tournament, but it didn't turn out. <laughs> going to net. Anyway, was keeping the ball out of the net was the word problem. <laughs> No, um, in terms of the outgoings, Ozzy, do you think it was fair enough that the likes of Smith Rowe, Ramsdale, and Ketchy, Nelson, and Vier all it was like, in other words, was it good for their careers to move on? Well, you know, I think, I think I think that shows a bit of class from Arsenal, right, as well, because we could have kept Smith Rowe, we could have kept Ed Ketchy, we could have we could have been very selfish and, and kept them as, as as a resource for another season until we could bolster. Um, but you know what? I think we, we show a bit of class there. We show to we show we show these kids that look look, we've given you an opportunity. We're not going to hold you back in your career, yeah. and 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 maybe other 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 kids in the academy are thinking twice about leaving to go to Manchester United, like at Danish. Like, if it's actually they've given them a chance and they've let them go when, when it's right for them. Let's we've got a duty to these players not to hold on and ruin their careers Absolutely. as well. Not like yeah. not like Chelsea. Yeah. So let's so let's you know I'm I'm quite proud of the way we dealt with that. Um, because like Arteta said, he sat down with the players, discussed with them, asked them if they wanted to stay because he, he would have entertained that. But they said they want to play football, and he wants to, he wants them to have a career because he owes Carl, them to to do that. Carl, that's a brilliant point you make because I'm going to ask a question to all the listeners. You tell me another industry that sells people. Yeah. You're selling you're selling people. So I think Arsenal did it really right with the guys. That it was about career advancement. I think you've probably gone as far as you can go with us, but look, you know, we're going to put a reasonable price on your head. We're not going to put you over there, you know. And you know, football's a strange industry. It sells people. I don't. Yeah. I don't it's know what it is. Yeah. But you know, you know what? Yeah. The benefit. You just the benefit. You to the sides. Yeah. Yeah. The benefit that it has, right? Because if, if if Fulham Fulham have a great player now, a, a, a young wonder kid that's looking to advance his career, who's it a bit special, who could do it, or is it any, uh, you know, he's going to get around. But you know, go to Arsenal; they'll look after you. Because if, if I, I won't just keep on, they'll they'll look after you. A great club; they looked after me. Exactly. They got me to this level, and then ultimately, you know, it, yeah, I didn't yeah. make it with them, but I wore the badge, and and they didn't withhold me going back. And I know people have been criticising eighteen for Aaron Ramsdale. 18 million is not enough. It goes up to 24, I think it is. But they've been criti- critical of that. But, but at the right time, we weren't being greedy because we're, we're, we're dealing with people's careers here, right? And we've yes, we, we're still going to get 24 billion for him over, over a period of time, which will help kick down that financial fair play date anyway. But ultimately, you, you, a player asked Ramsdale, should I go and join the Arsenal because they're interested in me? What do you think he's going to say now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They treated me with respect yeah. and class. And that's, 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 that's even even from a business point of view, and I know we have to move on to the Champions League, but even from a, a business point of view, we lost six million on Ramsdale. 
Did he give us six million more for in his two years that he was in goal? Oh, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I think he, yeah, he, no. he, he we got a, we got a great price for him, but he gave yeah. us a lot more than that. That yeah, he, yeah, he, he yeah. was part of that rebuilding process, and Absolutely. I'll always be, I'll always be thankful for that. You know, you know, and even said himself he was really excited to be part of the project up to now. You know. And look, I think Southampton be a fairly good move from you'll get game. He'd be probably I think Pazuna could find it hard to get back in that squad spot again, you know. I think Ramsdale is a better keeper than him. But um time will tell. But uh, for the likes of Smith Rowe, uh Wobie's there, Leno as Eamon said, and uh Reese Nelson, I think that could be a very good I think Marco Silva's a very good man manager for with players as well, you know. You know, Leno seems to like it there a lot there, you know. And I I thought Leno when he was our keeper just briefly, I thought he, he gave it his all, you know, Absolutely. maybe you know. Absolutely. You know. But the yeah. last thing I'll say before we move on to yeah. the, the, the other Champions piece. League, yeah. Like you talk about Smith Rowe, and I'm saying the boy doesn't look fit to me. That's not me dissing him. In fact, the only reason why I found myself watching Man United and Fulham on a Friday night in a game that Man United were probably going to win, given that it was the first day to see that, was because he was playing. I wanted exactly. to see how he was doing. I wanted to see how he was doing because <laughs> we're willing him to do well as gooners, you know? Yeah, all of us are. All of us are. Yeah. I was I was exactly the same. Sat there with my arsehole shit on. Cheer him on. <laughs> yeah, I hope you, I like it. They will be one team I'd be looking at just because of the former players they, they have from ours. But yeah, look, in many, it was so sad injuries really hampered Smith Rowan. I think probably mentally may have got to him a lot, you know, just in terms of frustration, losing his place and just not being able to get back at that level that he was at, you know. But he, he, he stuck out his guard against Leicester last weekend. <laughs> he looks like he's kind of back, you know, he sat smiling in his face. You know, when he scored, you could see he's happy again. You know, he's playing so. Look, so if we have to like, give if we have to give Fulham three players to let them let, let them give us six points this season. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, just thinking I'm joking, joking, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ozzy, for ruining the good mood on the show. <laughs> I it will be down. OG four minutes. Smith Rowe, <laughs> OG <laughs> six minutes. <laughs> Leno scores one of them screamers in his own goal. And then what happened is Chris Chris Cavanaugh sent the three of them off. <laughs> Chris Cavanaugh, are you watching? He's still to have another Ali Williams in a moment. Um, but that was it. That was a very it was a busy transfer window. But I'm really pleased with our with our business. Ninety seven million quid worth. Um, ninety seven point three million. Sorry. And uh, when you see Chelsea spend two hundred sixteen million on players that probably won't even get a look in, that that's that's where Chelsea are at. Span, 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 and it doesn't always mean success. Um, Nicholas Jackson is on a nine-year contract now. Yeah, I was on that um, for the Emirates five aside, but it was cut off. Dan, no, so you don't no, do it. Think about this: a nine-year contract. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely bonkers. Well, look, let them do what they want. It's a failing project, and I'm glad to see them going into turmoil. Um, <laughs> we move on to the Champions League draw. Um, there's new super mini super league, I like to call it, after this extension of teams. But um, here's our fixtures, anyway. That's uh, PSG at home, uh, Inter Milan away, Shatgar Donetsk at home, Sanchenko going back there. You know, that should be a bit of a moment for him if he gets a game against them. Uh, Atalanta away. Uh, Dynamo, Dynamo Zagreb um, at home, uh, Spartan Lisbon away, Monaco at home, and Girona away. Um, Eamon, what do you make of that draw for ourselves? I, I've read various kind of um, things about this, people saying it's a favourable draw. I think it's a poxy draw. I That's actually think mm. it's a poxy draw. I think it's like walking into a field of nettles, um, to be honest with you. But the one thing I'm going to say is, and I hate the fact that there's more matches and all of that, um, but I really like the format compared to that old tired nonsense that you used to get. Like with I, I, looking at all, looking at the entire league and who's playing who, it's a really interesting format. But I mean, Atalanta, look, man, they're good, you know. Yes. Um, uh PSG probably not great away from home, but they're 
to have one of the um the big teams. I'm glad we have Shakhtar Donetsk at home. Jesus Christ, you know, you go away there, forget about it. Inter Milan away. Um I think again, Girona again. away be tough because they're, they're pretty decent in themselves, aren't they? Girona. Well, that yeah. would well, well, they have the knack. Yeah. M -m -m my Girona. If you look, if you look at, by the way, just for the the, the, the younger listeners, 1979, the knack. My Sharona song should be banned if you actually listen to the lyrics. It's shocking. But um uh I know Corona kind of made it into their thing a few years ago. It was my Corona. Yeah, I think I think um I think uh, it was the lower pots uh, that were available. Like Girona or Celtic, I know who I take. Do you know? I yeah. think it's a really, really difficult draw, you know. Yeah, Monaco in themselves are decent enough as well, indeed. But uh, my face fell on Balogun again, the next game yeah. are coming back, yeah. Um, Ozzy, but the home, the home fixtures look fairly, you know, a side kind of PSG kind of sticks out, but but now Mbappe now, I don't think PSG mightn't be one to. Yeah, are you happy yeah. enough with the draw? We just got to win a win a home games. That that's that's the that's the key one. I think well, Paris Paris don't worry me as much as I know they're one of the big players. But I think watching Newcastle play them last season, they absolutely yeah. battered them at battered. home. Um, battered. And then, and I think like you know it's our first home game in Champions League. It's going to be an, an event. But they're missing Mbappe. I know you know. I think I think if we bring our A game to that. I think we get through it. Um, but but yeah, it, lot, lot, lot similar to what I even said. I think I think you know, sporting Lisbon and Inter Milan away. That um, that, 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 that game at Atalanta as well. Um, I think them three games are the tricky ones. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll just sit, any, any away. Your big uh, game uh, is a tricky game, isn't it? You know? Absolutely. But Carl, I, I think the thing for us is like we're going to qualify. Yeah. Right? But the real question for us is. Can we qualify in the top eight and go straight through? You know, um, I mean, if it, between 16th and 25th goes into the playoffs, but that's an extra, like, not, not only do you have the extra two group games, oh, then you have an extra two knockout games as well. You yeah, know? it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. Yeah. I I just, I just, when I saw the fixtures, the, the draw come out, it's just that Atalanta to start off with that. Away, and I think this sets the tone for our run in this in this run of games. Because if you lose that one, you're under pressure straight away, aren't you? You're trying to claw up back and get back at the table, and I think that puts added pressure of what you're already on. I think um, I, when I saw that, I sort of winced a bit. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want that, didn't want that team away, a team like that away from home because um, you know, very good side. Um, against all odds, won the final, didn't they, of Europa? Um, I think everyone thought that was going to be a, a, a win for Leverkusen. And, 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 yeah, it's so it's just, um, yeah, I think that that's a tricky, that, that Inter Milan and Sporting are a tricky one. I think our home games are all winnable. Um, but yeah, I've, I've yeah, let's just let's just see. Well, Champions League. It's what we. It's what, this is what we want, right? We want to be up against the best, playing in Europe against best team. We've we've cried out for this for years, so let's enjoy it. I am intrigued to see how this new format. I'm, I'm with Eamon on that. Um, I was a bit, you know, it took me a while to understand it. If I'm honest, I had to watch the video twice. But um, but yeah, but um, but yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting. Um, an interesting format. Looking forward to it. It's, it's brought a bit of you know, excitement back to it as well, I think. So uh, let's just see how we go with it. But yeah, I, I think... Yeah, and, and by the way, if, if we're 14th in the league after two games, um, we shouldn't really have a meltdown. No. We need to remember, 1-8 to eight is into the last 16. 16-25 to 25 is into the knockouts. You know? Yeah. So... You can afford you can afford a couple of cuts and bruises along the way, but I think um, it'd be great if you could get it done. We will qualify, but it'd be great if you could get it done without having to play those extra two games. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> any team in those two games could be difficult as well, couldn't it? You know, it, it make it could be difficult. So yeah, no, agreed. So looking forward to it. I think let's let's bring it on.
bring it on. Get Champions League nights back at the Emirates. Just can't wait for it. Love yeah, it. look, it's, it's at last the Champions League is in its right format. League formation, you know, it's kind of been. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's worth having a change, a bit of a change in it, isn't it? Like more games and more excitement, and the yeah, teams will be going like. The usual, like when you've won your first, say, three or four games in the old group stage, the last two games were meaningless. Now, I think every game will have something on it. And I think that's, you know, it can only be it, good. It, it is because of that top eight thing. Yeah, that sounds yeah. to be very competitive, isn't it? The incentive yeah. to get into the top eight, you know, uh, there'll be no dead rubbers, you know. It sounds to be more yeah. hard failure. I don't think I can do with this. It's only going to go on till ja- end of January, isn't it? As far as I know. Yeah. And then January 2029, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chelsea are January. geared up, but all their players are on 72 year contracts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose if this works in this way, the Super League will be back on. And I suppose that's something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to you. Look, trips away to Girona. I think Girona could be in January. I think. I think that's that, yeah. that game expensive in. Um, Atalanta, I think, be a good away game, actually. I think. And um, the last time we met Inter was the 5 1 when um, Henri, when we absolutely yeah. battled them. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. That kicks off. Um, I was playing that night, Mike. <laughs> you know me, I was. Li- I was oh, oh, Mike. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the old action is gas on the earth and channel was German. Just a slang twang of the cockney action. Um yeah, look, bring it on. Yes, as he said, Champions League football, more games, but a more um heart fader for all Arsenal fans. Happy days. You can't get more better than that. A no, more if this, if this format works, it might keep that Super League at bay a bit. And I think this is needed. Definitely. Uh, yes, I think I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't think that Super League will ever see the light of day. You know, to be being, being honest, no. But this is a good opportunity uh, to so forget about that. Isn't yes, it, I um, another busy preview show, lads. Um, thanks to Eamon and Ozzy for coming on as always. Right. Um, next Monday will be our preview of the North London Derby. We're hoping to have um, a Tottenham um fan from the. Hopefully the Irish Supporters Club over here for them. So I'll do my best to get an away fan. Um, we've got great feedback from having Pete on from the Brighton Irish Eagles Supporters Club. So um, that, that's the aim from the preview shows. I need to have a supporter on. So fingers crossed. Um, you can catch a show like the Dublin Nurse podcast on the Dublin Nurse YouTube channel and Spotify. Um, thanks for listening and watching. And we'll see you next week. Have a good week. Yeah.